around Christmas time last year, along the footpath through Kesselbarton between Helford and Frenchman's Creek, I came across these decorated trees. Decorated trees are entirely normal at this time of year, but out of their usual context these took me by surprise. I found them strange. I wondered if they had some kind of votive meaning. They brought to mind something I'd read about the Lizard Peninsula by Clara Vivian of Trella Warren. She'd said, If I were asked to describe the country briefly, I should use the single word magic. That sense of something more, behind or beyond or beneath things tangible or visible. She said of the lizard, Its atmosphere of magic was concerned with the streams and their secret undergrowth, and the coastal track that led along the high cliffs and down into the valleys, with bird life and wild flowers and moorland space, and these things have not yet been obliterated in this obliterating age of the bulldozer. And she said that these qualities and this magic is dangerously near extinction, threatened by the noise, ugliness and crowds of the industrial age. This was written in the 60s or 70s, perhaps earlier. Clara must have seen the arrival of the satellite dishes on Goonhilly Downs and the development of the naval base at Cold Rose. There must have been a good few bulldozers involved. The wind turbines are a more recent development. And there is a lot more polythene around. I wonder if Clara would feel that the sense of something more she experienced has been obliterated. Some months later, walking through a farmyard on another footpath near Helston, I saw this cross on a barn door. Oh, hi. Um, I was just looking at this. Um, what is it? Well, my mother-in-law asked me to put it. We're doing the cascade this year. Oh, yeah? Oh, cascade. Yeah, it's a, it's a ritual, a bit like the crying of the neck. You've oh, heard yeah. the crying of the neck. Yeah, you? I have, actually. Oh, well, this one comes at the start of the season. Yeah. And uh, the, the cascade is the procession right. around, the, uh, around this shape. And it moves the seasons on, so they say. I'd like to see that, but do you believe it? Really to believe or not believe, but I wouldn't be one not oh, to do it. I'll hold you up. Yeah, thanks Thank very you. much. Cheers. A procession around a shape to influence the seasons. Is this to do with Clara's sense of something more? A procession to celebrate the coming of spring is a famous custom in Helston. <laughs> my sisters took part through the 70s when we were at school. Though my understanding of its meaning was vague, the effect of the bass rhythm and the drum was visceral. Flora Day was already and remains quite a tourist attraction. I wonder what Clara thought of it. The tourists, crowds of the industrial age, are not all noisy and ugly. Maybe they are drawn by some unspecified desire to mark the season's change. The Cascade and Camera Drow. Maybe I remember my grandmother talking about it, but she died 20 years ago. The farmer suggested that if I was interested in the Cascade, I should go in to talk to his wife, Alice. She was making some of the bunting to mark out the route. So, um, is this for the cascade? Yes, yes, yeah, yeah, it is. Um, in my grand's time, they used dyed rags, but nowadays, well, this time round, we decided we would use colourful plastic bags that will last a bit longer. We can clap them together, just like a corn dolly, and uh, I think they look very effective. But as I'm doing this, I can see I'm running out of, I'm running out of pink. Um, I'm doing May at the moment, and I need, I need some more pink. Later that year, Alice arranged an opportunity for me to meet with her Uncle William. She said he'd be able to tell me a lot about the background to the cascade and crying the neck. Both these events are held around harvest time. 
far as I know, the Kaskurda means procession, and the camera draw is turnstile, turnstile or capstan. Right. So put together, they really mean a procession around a capstan or turnstile. Right. If you're interested in growing a new crop or trying out some new land, and it was very important to you, yeah. you would hold a Kaskurda. Yeah. It involved plotting out a, a cross. Every leg had a colour according to the season. Just for instance, um, the summer had bright colours like uh, bright green and red and yellow. Yeah. The autumn had, co had gold and browns. Mm -hmm. The winter, um, purple and black. Mm -hmm. And the spring, bright colours again like green and pinks and blues. People, people would walk around it. Um, this, is, this, is, this is what they did. Um, they would have flags. Yeah. Or, or branches of trees. They would be dressed in all different sorts of colours to represent the whole of the year, I think. Yeah. They would they would go around it, they would go around and then they'd make as much noise as they possibly could. They would use whistles, drums, anything that they would they thought they could bang and make a loud noise. Yes. It does remind me a little bit of, of what we used to call the Shivali band years ago. Uh, we used to serenade young married couples. I had it done to me myself. And, and I think it, it seems to resemble that sort of energy, that uh, bring about this energy that they thought was necessary. So it wasn't musicians or anything like that? Oh, just... no, no, no. <laughs> Dreadful noises, it, 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 really. I think they, they, they do, or they're, they're, I think they would probably try and get some sort of thing to do it. Yeah. But not very musical, no. No, so it would be a sound then and a rhythm than a yes. team. It would be energy. It, yes. Energy. They, they wanted to, to bring about the energy, and of course they were they were particularly interested in the length that represents the spring season. They used, they, think they, call, they used to call it the, the bridge here, and they would they would really make a noise, and and this was a bit longer, so that it would, it would have the most weight, the most energy, and the most noise, the most movement, yeah. and then this would this would help. The, they thought this would help to bring the spring around. It would motivate the seasons. So rotate the capstan, as you might say, rotate the seasons, and the seasons, hopefully then, would, would, would be a bit decent and come when they should do. So the cascade is done in anticipation. It's about trying to bring round the right conditions for a good crop. But what about crying the neck? Uncle William showed me a photograph. This was the modern version, more organized and formal with the people changed out of their work clothes. He described the original event, which was much more rowdy, taking place within minutes of completing the harvest. Everybody involved was out in the field, celebrating with a good deal of food and drink. It was something, something to celebrate, uh, and this is what they did. Uh, the, the last bit of standing corn, shall we say, the last square foot, the honour of cutting it was left to the farmer. He would take his sigh, he would cut it, and then when he'd cut it, he would pick it up, he would hold it high into the air, and he'd shout, I have it, I have it, I have it. And the rest of the labourers and the people surrounding him would say, What have it, what have it, what have it? And he would say, The neck, the neck, the neck. And this was followed by a series of hurrahs. First of all for the farmer, then for the labourers, then for the queen, and then for anything. Because really what they wanted to do was make a lovely bit of noise so that all the neighbours, it was a nice, quiet, still <laughs> evening, would yeah. know that they had finished their yes, harvest. Yeah. And they would be delighted over that. And then, of course, he would, the farmer would pick up his, his corn and he would make a bit of a, a corn, make a neck out of it. Usually the big farmers weren't very good with their hands, so they'd hand it over to the wife or to the daughter or somebody, yeah. and they, right on the spot, would then plait it. But they felt that this was the spirit of the harvest in the Gorn Dolly. Yes. It was needed to be protected until the next year. They would bring it into, a, into the big farmhouse. Yeah. It was put over the, the breastplate of the farmhouse, and there it stood in honour until the next year. Was there a similarity in meaning with the cross made for the cascade? Yes, I think what they did was, they made, as you might say, a symbolic 
break here, which represented the whole of the cross. And there again, this spirit was captivated in this. Yes. And if they put it and pinned it onto a door of a building fairly close, yeah. Uh, this would remind the forces to be that this was a continual thing and they needed the season that it would stay there for 12 months and that they hoped that their efforts and energy would, would produce the right results, the season coming at the right time and in the right way. You said that uh, in the days before binders and combine harvesters there would be a big feast in the farmhouse after the ceremony in the field. How about in more recent times? After the neck or the corn dolly is made, what happened then? Then they would all retreat to a church and have a, and a service. And they do that to this day. They still do this. Go to a service. Very nice. Nothing wrong with it. Was that the same as Harvest Festival? Or? Usually that, it had been the church had been decorated for Harvest Festivals. So it yeah. was ideal. Yeah. For, it's yeah. ideal for them to go to it. Yeah. And then what they would do after that, they would all retire to the village hall and, and have a pasty supper. And I should be saying they're doing this now. This is common practice now. Yes. But you see, nice as it was, it never came anywhere near to this community supper that they had in the village, in their in the big farmhouse kitchen, with the spirit of the corn, the spirit of harvest in the corn dolly, looking out to them. Harvest festival is an important date in the church calendar. The decorations of flowers and produce from the congregation are tokens of thanksgiving. Some of the hymns were called beliefs embodied in the corn dolly. were placed by farmers to intercede with the powers of nature to provide a good living. As well as Thanksgiving, Harvest Festival makes a similar appeal to the will of God. Clara may not have had such a hands-on relationship with the land, but her sense of awe for the forces shaping the landscape surely came from the same place. There may be more machinery, technology and industry since the time that Clara wrote, but it doesn't mean there is no sense of something more behind or beyond or beneath things tangible or visible. Maybe it's about people and belief, or about a need to connect with elemental forces. Or maybe it's awareness that though elemental forces can be measured and channeled, they are forever beyond the reach of our control. Clara needn't have worried about obliteration of the magic, it's in that sense of awe, and in the wish to celebrate, or even motivate, the seasons turning. <laughs> 